power platformers to use Planet a lot with your team. Maybe you move tasks from a backlog to doing to complete. Do you notice that over time your planet is getting really slow or do you want to archive those done tasks so they don't clutter up the view? Maybe you've got repetitive tasks that you complete but they're just build up in this done column to a point where it's kind of a mess and search takes ages to find anything. If this is you then watch this video and I'll show you how using a great tool called Power Automate you can set up a simple archive or delete policy for old tasks and clean and speed up the planner board for the whole team. So I did this video a little while back, back in 2023, but since a lot's changed in both Power Automate and Planner, I figured now's a really good time to just go back through the rudiments of both of the pieces there at play and just share with you what it actually looks like from the ground up to build this flow. So I'm going to start with, now this is my new planner board. You'll see it's called Sprints. It could be called anything for you. It's a planner board associated to a team, but we don't need to worry too much about that. All we need to see is that You've got some buckets for work and we've got the very common to do, doing and done. Over time, what will happen is work gets carried across and it gets done. And then maybe you review that in the next stand up with your team or whatever your process is. You're going to start to tick those little icons there and you'll hear the little ding, which means that um, your task has closed down. And then we've got three completed tasks. That's fine for me working on one planner board, but when you've got multiple team members and probably many, many tasks, this number here can grow. And as it grows, it gets a little bit more difficult for planner to respond in a timely manner. Certainly when you get hundreds and hundreds of tasks, we've had thousands of tasks in this completed task column before. There is a way though that I'm gonna show you where you can automatically catch this activity on a regular basis and just clean your board. So hold in your memory, we've got three completed items, two that are in the done column we've not yet reviewed with our team. And let's pop over to Power Automate. So we have a refreshed Power Automate canvas here where you can do lots using natural language, but I wanna share with you from the ground up how to build a flow and the relevant pieces as you start to connect to Planner. So I'm gonna to pop to this little create icon over here and we've got some options at the top here starting from blank, which is what I want to do. You do have templates and over time I encourage you to explore those. But what I like to do to learn the rudiments of Power Automate is to begin, follow a demonstration like this and hopefully learn what's going on. So in this case, what I want to do, and the clue was slightly in my, my description earlier, on a regular basis, I want to review what's in that completed, that done column, and based upon some parameters, just get rid of some tasks. So in this case, I'm gonna choose scheduled because I want something to happen regularly on the dot at a particular time of day, week, month, whatever I set it as. So in this case, I'm gonna give the flow a name. I can set some parameters here and say I'll start it today or and I can also set the recurrence. So just for the sake of this particular demo, I'll just click create with all those default set up in place. So this here is what's called a trigger. This is the thing that's gonna wake up Power Automate and start to do its activity. You may be very familiar with Power Automate, you may not, but what I want to share with you is that what you're looking at here is what's called the new canvas, the new designer. You can go back to the more familiar for some of us, uh, classic designer by clicking here, but I'm gonna stick with this for the sake of this video because this is what most of you will interact with right now in 2024, late 2024. So the first thing, it's going to wake up. It doesn't do anything at the minute. I'm actually gonna set it to be every week because that's more realistic. I don't wanna tidy up every uh, minute of every day. And I can set some parameters here, but it doesn't really matter. I just want every week on, uh, let's just go for a Monday, for me to tidy up my planner tasks. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a an action, it's called, and we're gonna to connect to planner. Actions are found in groups, and as you build with Power Automate, you'll find you get more and more used to the groups. So the planner group has a whole bunch of actions in it. If you saw what I did there, I clicked on planner, it expanded all these actions, and again, with some practice, you'll start to find the particular actions that are more useful to you. In this case, what I want to do is I actually want to use something called list tasks. You've got over here a little icon which will just give a brief explanation. It is what it says on the tin. Click list tasks. And is this is common across all Power Automate actions. When you add a, an action, there will be parameters to fill in. Generally, very little code. 
sometimes what's called expressions can really help you out but for these videos I'm going to try and keep it really simple to give you those building blocks to start to experiment with Power Automate. So what we need to know is what group ID to pop into here and what plan ID to pop into here. Now as you learn the parameters and what they actually mean in different actions you start to get used to this but just a quick shortcut for planner actions if you're really unsure which one to choose if you go back to your plan and you find the plan name you can see there's a there's an ID under there which is actually the group name and the plan name there another location this can be found if you click on plan details you'll see up here we've got general and we've got the group so that's a group name that I'm looking for, so the group ID in Power Automate terms. So let's just experiment with that, it's Clab365, it's in my list there so I can click it. The key thing is here, you have to be a member of the plan to be able to do this. Then the plan ID, change the word ID for name, that's the plan name, and if you recall what I was using was sprints. They should just pop up there and you can choose the right ones, and that's that action done with. The next thing we're going to do, it's a slightly unusual action to start with, but a super useful action when you start to get used to using Power Automate, and it's called Filter Array. So I've typed Filter Array in there, and you can see under Data Operations we've got Filter Array. Again, this is going to ask me for some information to understand what it's supposed to do. So it's saying here, what do you want me to filter? If I just take a step back and explain what's happened, when the time has become correct, this Power Automate flow is woken up. It's then connected via the background to Planner. And what it's done is it's retrieved all of the tasks on that Planner. Now, what it's done is it's kind of put them into a, a virtual memory, if you like. It's grabbed the information, but it's stored it in a way that is meaningful to Power Automate. And that method is it, it's actually put it into some data structures. So effectively, just think of this as a whole bunch of data which represents the plan. So when we see visual plans, Power Automate sees data in a sequence that represent all of the items in that plan. Now what this action is going to do is it's going to say, I don't care about most of the actions, I only want to narrow down and focus on those actions in my plan which are 100% complete. And just a little bit of an indicator as to why I've chosen that, when you tick an item here, behind the scenes again, there are parameters, there's pieces of information relating to these particular cards that we see. One of those is something called the percent complete. When you tick it, that piece of data gets set to 100, the value 100. So with that knowledge, what we can do is we'll choose from this little icon here, the dynamic content. It's offering us up any information it thinks we can use effectively in the course of this workflow. And it's already understood the data that it received from these lists and it's got a piece of information around who's assigned to each plan item. I don't want that. And then this represents the data for each of those items. That's what I'm going to hook into. The next thing is, well, what, what do I want to filter on? Well, the beauty of this is because I've now pointed Power Automate to, let's say, the content of that planner task, when I now click into this and choose dynamic content, apologies it's off the side of my screen there, it's understood that there's some data it can hook into on that planner task. Now, always get used to clicking see more. I say this in a lot of videos. I used to forget a lot and think my data's not there. But if you click see more, you get a whole bunch of information. And if you start to look at this, you'll start to see it's kind of... It's got parallels to the tasks that we're all used to. The, the, uh, the flags, the labels, all that good stuff. The piece of data that we want from the item is actually called percent complete. I mentioned it earlier. It's the value of percent complete. If you click on that, it'll add it to the box. It'll say, okay, I'll take that for each of the items that I'm going to be looking at from that list of data. And if it's equal to 100, I'll keep it. And if not, I'll effectively discard it at this stage. And what I always recommend you do as you start to build your flows is to save regularly. But when it makes sense to you, do perform a test. That way you can be sure that your flow is building up in the manner that you want it to build up versus get to the very end, have a problem and not know where that problem occurred. So I'll just do a quick test now. Click manually because this is a recurrence trigger which means that it's only going to happen on a particular time. I'm effectively simulating that time being now. That's what I've just done there. 
One thing I will say as you test, if you've got actions which do things like send planner tasks or send emails or send Teams messages, just be super careful about your testing because you might be sending Teams messages all the, all the time. So there we go, it's run, it's succeeded with these little green ticks. I'll just show you what I mean by um, the data that's going through Power Automate being in a different format. It's not visual. So I scroll down here to the body of the outputs of that list. You can see it's a whole load of gobbledygook to you and I. There is a way to understand that, we won't go into that in this video. But then what we can see is when the filter array happens, that, uh, that same kind of gobbledygook is here. But in a moment, we'll actually see that what it's really done is it's filtered down just to particular items that are 100% complete. So, so far, we know our flow is running. If you really want to be super advanced, what you could do is copy that body from the output of this action, maybe pop it into Copilot and say, what's this telling me? It's quite a nice way to test what's coming back. This is in the format of JSON, Copilot, uh, not this one, but the one in your browser or ChatGPT are really good at reading it. It will probably tell you you've got um, a bunch of items which are marked as 100% complete and it might even give you the names of them. So you can use that tip to help you as you learn to test your flows. Anyway, so I've done that test. I've got to click edit to go back into the edit designer to the designer. So I'm back here again. So the thing we need to do is we know we've got more than one item potentially now in the memory of Power Automate. So the first thing we're going to do is put in an apply to each loop. That's what's called a control. The control is applied to each. What do we want to loop through? You can see we've got this nice little box which kind of indicates we're going to go round and round and round. Uh, we want to actually apply to each of the values that came out of this filter array. If you imagine the filter array's got a, a bunch of data and each planner task is individually identifiable in the data, then what this will do is it will pick through each of them, whether there's one or a thousand, and in turn perform the following actions. So the following actions, um, you, I'll just hover over this so you can actually do this and compare. You can see that this particular apply to each is going to look at the filter array body. That means the data that's sat in this filter array. So now we've got this looping through all of the um, items in the filter array. What we'll do is we'll check something for each of those items. So if you're going to think about it, we're narrowing down our focus here. So we're going to use an action called condition. sits in the control group and what it'll do is it'll allow you to test an aspect of the item that's in memory and at the moment the item is the body of a piece of data that's sat in that action there so what we can now do is we can drill into that particular filter array and get a piece of data and if you click on the see more there the piece of data that we are after is the completed date time so what we're going to say is, is that completed date time? You can set your own rule here, but I'll make it a little easier on you by just flipping up to this plus icon and add an action and put in current, current time. You'll see there's a group of actions here, date time. Really handy if you just want some quick reference points. So we'll put current time in. It just lives on its own. It gives an output of the current time. And what we'll say is, has this thing been completed less than right now. So we're choosing the dynamic content, we'll choose current time. So it's just kind of filtering, narrowing, narrowing our focus. If the action in planner was completed before right now, whenever this runs, well, we'll go and do a thing. So let me just save that. And while that's saving, just have a think about what you might want to do to put into the different legs of this condition. So what we're saying here is I've got a whole bunch of items, narrow them down to percent complete 100 just store the current time for each of the items that I've got hold of is the completed time equal or less than the current time if it is we're going to hit the true leg if it's not we'll ignore it it's fine it can stay let's just pop over to our planner task and have a quick look I've restaged some actions because through testing I've deleted some so I've got one two there's a third task which is complete so the only one I want to see deleted from this is that task three so let's pop over here. That's just been created. So the last action, have a little go at this yourself, is to delete a planner task. And again, just scrolling down all the actions that we've got, we do have delete a task. It is in preview, so use this with caution, but I'm going to select that item and it's going to ask me which ID task, which ID of the task do you want me to remove? So let's have a look what my options are. 
if I open this up, I expected this, you get a full long list of planner tasks. So let's just scroll to the bottom and enter custom value. We'll choose dynamic content instead. So we've got to choose carefully which item we're going to delete. So again, I'm going to go into the filtered array and I'm going to choose the ID from that location. So the ID of the task. So that makes sure that it's only going to get the ID of the task that's currently in the scope of this delete. Let's save that and let's give it a test. So you'll see what it's done is it's found one item. So these, these little chevron here mean this is how many items it thinks it's got in that filter array. Now I'm delighted by that, that it's found one because I only really had one that was um, in scope for deletions. But what we've got here is it's not actually met the condition of deleting it. So it's made me wonder why. Let's just have a little look into here. So it's the output of the filter array is body three. I don't know if you noticed that, but if, if you're getting used to reading this sort of stuff, you can scroll down it. Let me just go back to the top so you can see it. You see there task three. So the title of the task that's in this filter array now, because it's 100% complete, is task three. So what I've said then is go get me the body. So go get that thing. It's all good practice for getting used to debugging. So we'll just go and have a little look at that apply to each, that condition. So I know that it successfully ran this because it had one item. Oh, okay. I know what I've done. Silly me. Is completed date time equal to the current time of the run? Well, no, it's not. It's actually prior um, is less than. There we go. Let's click save. It's always good to get used to the fact that things go wrong when you're testing and don't be afraid by that. And let's give it a test. And there we go. This time it's got the green ticks all down the board. It's found one item. It believes it's deleted one item. Let's go and have a look. Give it a refresh. And there we go. All my lovely active tasks that are not ticked are gone. Next time this runs, if I tick that one, that will get deleted as well. So yeah, that works nicely. A really simple flow that you can implement. You can tweak this to your heart's content with the conditions, but hopefully that's of use to you. Take care now and check out the next video when you can.